BioBalance HealthCast, episode 200, the BioBalance Health Medicated Weight Loss Program. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Dr. Maupin and I are going to be talking today about an exciting new weight loss program that she's implementing at her office. We're going to run through the details of that, but let me give you a little bit of framework if I can. Uh, A lot of people come to get evaluated for hormone replacement therapy, in particular testosterone replacement, because they hit middle age and they start to develop belly fat that they can't get rid of no matter how much they starve themselves and how much they may be exercising. It just doesn't go away. And what they find then is that with testosterone, they build muscle mass and some of that fat turns to muscle. And over a period of time, they have more strength and more energy and so on to exercise. The testosterone by itself doesn't cause you to lose weight, but it positions you to be able to lose weight. And as a result of that opportunity, some people take advantage of it and some people don't. And so sometimes people come in and say, oh, I've taken testosterone and I'm actually gaining weight. Woe is me, it's the testosterone. Well, it isn't. It's the it's the lifestyle habits and the eating habits and the genetic factors and the general health factors that need to be uh, included in a discussion of hormone replacement therapy. And so because that's a fairly common sort of conversation to have, Dr. Maupin began to think about what can we do in a, in a programmatic or formal way to to incorporate those people who have this concern and be able to help them as well. Uh, I look at what's around, you know, generally if there's some other, if there's some other perfect practice mm-hmm. that is, is actually doing nutrition, exercise recommendations, and medicine right. for weight loss and dietary evaluations, right. then I would just say, go to blank. Mm-hmm. But in in this area, there's nothing that has, nobody who has it all. The full package. And we have one additional package, which is we give you testosterone and replace estradiol, and that gives you the opportunity to actually lay, lose weight and keep it off mm-hmm. if you do these other things, but you've spent years gaining weight and I mean I did that and I I honestly habits. when yeah. my ovaries were removed gained 20 pounds Ooh. in I mean it was you didn't I didn't know you then thank goodness but I gained 20 pounds and I was swollen and I cried every morning because my clothes didn't fit and that had to do with no testosterone and I became very insulin resistant yes pre-diabetic hypo, hypoglycemic yeah, but this sure. happened like that when my ovaries were out yeah so all of a sudden, I'm swollen and I'm exhausted and I can't work out. And when I do work out, my muscles don't aren't aren't working, and I'm exhausted when I'm done working out instead of being energized like I am now. So when that happened, and when I finally found the answer with the hormones, I took advantage of it, and I I got my testosterone, which does make you leaner, mm-hmm. may not decrease your gravity, it increases muscle and loses fat. But it may not change your weight for the first six it, to nine resh- months. It'll reshape your body right. and because it re- of those it things. It should decrease right. belly fat. Right. It should. Now, it should. You have the opportunity to do this. But right. if you're eating tons of carbohydrates and you're continuing to not exercise and you're mm-hmm. continuing to have bad habits and drink half a bottle of wine every night with your husband or, or, or partner, then... That's not going to do it. It's not going to be just testosterone that does it, but it's like having a door that's closed. And for me, it was that door was locked. I was never going to be thin again. I was never going to have muscle again. I was going to sit like a a lump and not have any energy. That door was shut. I could never be who I used to be. But when I got the testosterone, the door opened. And it allowed me to walk through and do the things I had always done. I had always worked out. Mm. I quit working out for several years when my hormones were gone. And I actually went back to the gym. My daughter brought me back to the gym and started working with a trainer who made me go, who made me work out, who asked me what I was eating. And then I'd write down everything because, by golly, you eat mindlessly. So I know what this problem is. Well, I've been there, and and I know what problems my patients are having. So I wanted to have the ultimate weight loss because because I'm a physician, I have the opportunity to do what weight loss clinics can't do, right. give people medication. And there are some great medications out now, 
It's taken years to get these to come out and be proven as great weight loss medications. Right. But we pretty much have an opportunity to give a weight loss medication plus all of these other strategies. excellent strategies for losing weight and watch you and monitor monitor patients so that they actually lose weight and keep it off. So it's designed so you can keep it off. And if you start gaining, you come back for a couple of consultations. We don't charge anything up front. We just charge for the consultations with our nurse practitioners. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's just like an office visit for weight loss. Now, nobody else does it that way. And we don't make you buy food from us. So that's another, that's another that's plus. That's a huge thing. You're not selling those kind of ancillary things. I'm selling I'm Good selling health. supplements, that's it, and, yeah. and advice and, and a prescription that you have to go to the pharmacy but for. supplements but, that are tailored to the plan that the individual needs. Right. And Not just a, here, everybody needs to take 22 of these. No, but I'll tell you what everybody does need to do. All right. If you want to lose weight. I was hoping you would. <laughs> you have... Well, we're going to get blood work, and we're going to evaluate your lifestyle right. and things like that with you. So that helps. However, you cannot drink alcohol while you're losing weight. You're done. Stop drinking alcohol. None. Do you know if how depressing you, you can be? I'm sorry. That's, that's tough. If you want to lose weight, and you want to lose it quickly, or you have a goal, or you are just sick of the way you feel, yeah. then you have to stop drinking alcohol until you reach your goal weight. Yeah. And then you have to slowly go back and not overdo it. And because it's all sugar. Because it's all it's all sugar. It doesn't say you know what? It doesn't say it's sugar when you look at what's in alcohol, it turns right. the sugar in your liver right. immediately. And it gives you this boost of sugar and then it makes formaldehyde. <laughs> and then you get that's, that's why what they, they say call drunks it are pickled. Well pickled. That's right. Yeah. It's pickled. It's formaldehyde. So and then it goes from formaldehyde in your liver to lipids. Mm -hmm. Fat. Triglycerides. So your triglycerides spike, and you have to have something to do with it. And of course, most people who are drinking aren't exercising at the time. So usually, it just goes right to fat. So, so alcohol's out, water is in, and I don't care what you put in the water to make it taste better, like a sweetener. Stevia based is always best, but but water and bubble water is okay. But water, and you have to drink. I always have to think about this. You have to drink half of your weight in pounds in ounces. Of so of water. Half so of your weight in pounds. In, in ounces, ounces of water. per day. Per day. So if you're 100 pounds, right. then you have to drink 50 ounces of water a day. So that's easy to think of. Right. Okay, so you get that. So, I mean, I just try to drink as much as I can without going to the bathroom every 15 minutes. So, I mean, drinking water is very important, and you have to rehydrate, or you're not going to get rid of the fat. So that's everybody. So there are some rules for everybody. So I'm, then, I'm 200 pounds. I need to drink 10, 10 ounce glasses a day. Mm -hmm. Or 10 8 ounce glasses. Yeah. 10 10, 10, 10, 10. Yeah, 10 10. Okay. Right. So so those those two things, you have to exercise every day for at least half an hour or every other day for an hour and you have to be out of out of breath. You have to breathe hard and you have to have your heart rate up. You can't say walking your dog and talking to your neighbors is exercise. It's just not. I'm but sorry. I like to amble. <laughs> You're not that's fine. Well, You're just not going to lose weight. Yeah. Oh, that, you have to walk fast. You, I mean, I have a dog that walks me, so my I can't. My wife, I almost have to run with my, my dogs. wife. Walks downhill everywhere she goes. She walks really fast. I walk with her. Oh my god! I walked with her, and she's walking like she's running, and so do yeah. I. So we walk together, and you're behind us. Way behind. When, we go, behind. when we go on business trips, and we're doing, we're walking to wherever because yeah. we need exercise, and we haven't gone to the gym. We go out and kind of power walk, and Brett's kind of walking behind us. And, and they stopping. don't even know I'm gone because they're just busy jabbering. <laughs> It's and, really and they fun. can do that and walk at the same and time. And Phyllis has lost a ton of weight, yeah. and you lost 35 pounds. Yes, I did. And so all of these things, I mean, it works. And everybody comes up to me going, "Why you're still losing weight, so what's the deal? Mm -hmm. So I'm still losing weight. It's slow, cool. but I'm still losing weight. I have it, all it my clothes tailored. I wore change. this four years ago, yeah. and I had to have it tailored that much on either side. Yeah. I like the dress, so I had it, I had it taken taken in. But but it comes a lifestyle change. The problem with most people's conceptualization of diets is I'm going to crash diet, I'm going to lose ten pounds, and then I'll be better. That's and kind of okay if you're under forty. It, it works. I used to do that. It works for you to come off, but it doesn't stay off. As soon as you you like reach your goal, it's kind of like great. I'm going to go out and get a bottle of wine and, and a whole cake, and you immediately <laughs> start to 
creep back up. That, that's why I have everybody write everything down so they get yes. used to writing yes. everything down. So if if I'm going to the snack closet, I hate to even say that, where we have crackers and graham crackers and whatever, it's not like I'm have, I have Oreos in there. But I mean, but if I'm going to go to the snack closet because I am still hungry after I've eaten what I'm supposed to eat. There's nothing in the snack closet but, but kale chips. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would help. But but I have to write it down. Yeah. I have to put it down and you can't mindlessly eat. So so all of these things are required. They're they all required for weight loss for everybody. But then we personalize it because every diet doesn't work for everybody. I mean, and in truth, you have to have a diet that stimulates your metabolism. You have to have something that stimulates your metabolism. Right. That could be medication, it could be exercise, or it could be supplements, but usually we don't have supplements. So as, do as you that get enough. older, your metabolism slows down. And if you if you decrease the calories you take in, thinking that is going to cause you to lose weight, right. then your metabolism shuts down too. Seriously. And that's a paradox. Your body yeah. was meant to do that so that when we survived the cave people years or when we were in Africa running yeah. around trying to hunt down animals to eat, we had to be able to eat a lot, slow our metabolism down, store it, and then when we were going out running, then we ha it we had to use demand. it. Right. So we are built for that, mm -hmm. and we're built for walking eight, 18, 16 or 18 miles a day. So we don't do that in general unless you're in Europe. I yeah. walk a lot in Europe. So that's part of the reason Europeans are so thin. They don't drive everywhere. But having said all of this, that's basic. Mm -hmm. But what we're going to offer is medically medically um, managed, but medically meaning not what everybody else says medically. We're going to offer medicines that are meant for you to help you decrease Stop eating, mm -hmm. or stop eating a lot. Mm -hmm. Decrease your your um, intake and met increase your metabolism. So we're gonna to throw off that whole process that our body was has spent millions of years or thousands of years perfecting. Right. And these medicines are not appetite appetite suppressants. They're they medicines. Are. They're appetite suppressants and and, and well, I mean only appetite suppressants. Right. We right. usually get we usually give something that has both in it. Mm -hmm. But but. Weight loss medications, the same weight loss medications, not perfect for everybody. That's what I was going to say, and because they're will, more than just appetite suppressants. They have specific targeted interactions. Right. So it depends on the metabolism of the individual, mm -hmm. which one you would recommend. Well, I, and for example, I have a patient that I'm going to recommend this for. Mm -hmm. And um, she was talking to a friend who then relays everything she says to me, which is very convenient, <laughs> because... <laughs> Her so friend's my friend. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of, you know, so so she said, well, I, I'm going to take this new drug, Belvic. Great, for weight loss. And I said, so, yeah, she needs to lose some weight. And she's, it's all here. And she's already on testosterone. So she's she's working out and doing those things. But as I remember, she drinks two or three drinks a night. Is she going to stop doing that when she takes this drug? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. So that's not going to work. You can't take these drugs and still drink. You can't take these drugs and still eat carbohydrate-rich foods. It's not it's not a a balance so that you can go be bad and right. eat things that are bad for you. It is something that is going to help you actually lose weight, but you've got to follow the rules. See, all these diets that say, oh, you don't have to do anything, right. and they give you something like a, I don't know, herb, and they say it's going to make you lose weight. It might help you for that time, but it's coming right back on or it's not going to work at all. So you've just wasted your money on that. Here, <laughs> we're going to make sure or we are going to watch you. We can't go home with you, but we're going to watch you and give you something to help you. But you have to do your half, too. Well, it goes back to the a couple of recent podcasts that we were doing about how people make decisions and, mm -hmm. and generally have accidental lives. This has to be a proactive choice that you invest in. If you want to lose weight, you have to think about it, and you have to behave in response to that desire. You can't just desire it and not de – you can't want it real bad and have it happen. And, and you have to have a goal right. that you know will help you with the goal that's reasonable, a goal of weighing like at 18 I weighed 102. Mm -hmm. Now I weigh 130. Okay. That's – And so would it be realistic for you to say I want to get back to 102? No. 
It's not it, healthy. If I did that, I'd my older face. Right, you look anorexic. But I'd look anorexic, and all my skin would fall off of me, and right. I'd have big waddles under my arms, and I mean, I'd have extra skin everywhere, and that mm. wouldn't look good on me. Plus, it's not healthy to be that skinny. Mm. I was just a little anorexic. <laughs> so, I mean, that's kind of the so seven. Kind of like being a little bit pregnant. Um, yeah, kind of yeah, like that. A little anorexic. Is so, not a good thing. no, it isn't a good thing. But, but for those of us who grew up in the seventies, that was kind of a normal thing. Twiggy. Everybody looked at Twiggy mm -hmm. and and yeah. um, laughing, and everybody was really skinny on on yeah. all of those Goldie Hall. shows. But um, they ha they were using medication, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was it was over the top, and that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for healthy. A good lifestyle you can continue and get you to where your last you, you get to your goal weight and the and we're trying to motivate you not that this would motivate people usually it would have to be bigger than this but when you get to your goal weight that last consultations free yeah because we're gonna tell you how to maintain on that last consultation mm -hmm. so you can come in and talk to us for free after that but, I mean consultations either I forget if it's a hundred or hundred and fifty dollars but you don't have to do it very often to right. get to your goal weight we're going to do it faster than other people do and keep it off because we're using medicines and these medicines so, are prescription medicines. they're medicines they're that are no things. they're prescription medicines so one of the one of the things we start with though is we start with reviewing your laboratory okay and we so will, it's not just a conversation you want to find out about my blood work as right. well before before we talk about weight loss. Right. And okay. and if you're already a biobalanced patient, You'll I've already that. got your blood yeah, work. Right. I can just go over it and say, this is what I see that is causing you to have trouble losing weight. Or it's what I see that we need to fix. Like mm -hmm. triglycerides are elevated or blood sugar is elevated. All right. So my family has a multi-generational history of diabetes on both sides. Mm -hmm. So I so have mine. to watch that as a concern about mm -hmm. my weight. So if I come in and tell you, which you already know because you have my blood work, mm -hmm. I have a diabetic concern, then would that steer you in a direction for me with a particular medicine or yes. a particular aspect of the program? Yes, so, absolutely. So can you talk to me about that? I, I don't mind. So so um, because of that, and and I have that's probably why I became anorexic. I have everybody in my her grandparents, not my parents, but my grandparents all had diabetes and all died of right. some some complication like my grandmother died at 53 of a heart attack because she weighed 300 pounds and she was a diabetic. Oh and so Four that's, foot eight. yeah, she was really short. <laughs> Lithuanian, good, good, healthy, lots yeah. of bacon grease Sturdy and stuff. peasant woman. Yeah, exactly. I have peasant yeah. stock. So, but diabetes is something that hits everybody and, or anybody. Right. So, Having it in your family made me freak out and, and just not eat, which is not healthy. But w we did it with you, very healthy. We saw elevated blood sugar, elevated triglycerides, high, high cholesterol, high, um, high, high cholesterol and high blood pressure. All of the things that go with too much weight. Right. And before, you had been trying to eat right, and Phyllis cooks beautifully. I mean, she cooks very healthy meals. Which but I'd sneak off and get sugar. I go off and get some M and M's, or you know, stop for a donut after I'd had a healthy breakfast, I mean, and I wouldn't tell her because I'd get in trouble. <laughs> Just like mom. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> exactly. I know you, there's something psychologically about that. But by Ted Drews, and you know, my car would just turn in. You never told me that before. Well, Confession. I'm telling you. Confession for, for, for the soul. soul. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when I looked at all of your labs yeah. and. Your family history and you said a very inappropriate word when you looked at those. I did. Yeah, <laughs> you were like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, I I did. It you were was walking hard attack. Yeah, and I I just didn't. You yeah. didn't look like that on the outside. And so many of you don't know that. You know, if you haven't been to your cardiologist or to your preventive medicine doctor or to your hormone doctor, then you probably don't know if you have all of these things going on if you've gained weight. So when I looked at you, I thought I need to get you to lose. 30 something pounds. Which and is an unbelievable goal. Right. When you're talking about setting a reasonable goal. I was thinking 10 pounds. <laughs> but I knew yeah. where your triglycerides were, and my nurse practitioners and nurses know all of this. But we know that that's, that is something that we can fix. We can, we can help you lose weight and bring everything back into normal, healthy parameters. So I told you about the diet, and I told your wife about the diet. Right. I told you how important it was because it's very important not to get diabetes. It's very important not to keep having high blood pressure for men, especially because men 
don't function as well when they're on blood pressure medicine. So that doesn't mean stop taking blood pressure medicine. It means stop having high blood pressure. Yeah, get healthier. So get healthier. So yeah. you had a bunch of motivations that we talked about. And two nags. But and I still, I still <laughs> have to take the I, I myself. I do not nag. Oh, I'm here to tell you. Okay, so yeah. I nag. Okay, so that's because I see you every week. So I have, I know if you're yeah. gaining weight yes, or losing weight. So for you, Santa Claus. I Washington. looked at all the medications that I could give you, right. and the one that fit you right. was Victoza. Mm-hmm. And Victoza is a, a is a shot. It's not cheap. It is something that you only, if you're doing it for weight loss, you only have to do it for three or four months. Well, if you're doing all the other things too. Right. If you're right. just doing Victoza you don't change your behavior pattern. You'll it, probably it still good. lose some weight if you have diabetes or prediabetes, but you're not going to get to goal. Right. And that's where you need to be to be healthy. So the Victoza decreased your appetite, made you feel full early, mm-hmm. and it made you lose weight because it corrected that insulin re- uh, resistance. So we had tried something else. We have another medication called metformin. We had tried that. That wasn't as effective. So we tried that first. Then we went to Victoza, and Victoza was the key for you. Yeah, and I had to quit driving to Tedra's. I had to actually walk. <laughs> well, that's that's okay, actually, from where you live. That's five miles. Yeah, Tedra's, Tedra's is a, a very wonderful, and it's not really unhealthy if you eat the small ones. But it's it's an egg. Unless you eat a lot of small ones. It's yeah, it's egg custard. So it has cream, it has milk, and I mean, unless you believe or have a milk intolerance, right. it has eggs in it for protein. And so, so you you know, it's one of those things that it's a specialty in St. Louis. It's a it's a family business here, right. and and the owner is amazing. But having said that, you can only do that every once in a while. If you walk there, I think you probably wor- you'd be okay. You would probably wear it off on the way home, but. You have to you have to do these other things as well. So yes. I can't stress that enough. But you did everything right. Thirty five pounds later, you've kept it off for how many years? Uh, three years, I think. And what drugs are you off of? All of them. I'm not on any drugs. <laughs> no blood pressure medicine. No cholesterol medicine. But you're on thyroid because you had a low thyroid. I'm on, I'm on thyroid. And I'm on uh, testosterone pills. Right. And that's the only thing I'm taking. Which is, and how old are you? I'll be sixty seven next month. Which is also amazing. That's truly that I amazing. I this long. No, that you look, you look younger than you are, and your health is younger than most yeah. people who are your age. It, it truly is a blessing, but it truly does require a proactive cognitive in, and behavioral investment. And there are other medicines and other programmatic steps that we want to hammer home. And if you're interested in this, come back for our next podcast, and we'll go into more detail and less personal information, more detail about how you can find out what you need to do so that you can lose the weight that you want to lose. You may see yourself in some of our uh, uh, some of our case yeah. case examples, case studies that you can um, you can realize that my that's me. I need to do that. So, thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.